A striking and nearly unique feature of human reproduction is menopause. And it's puzzling. If evolution actually runs on reproductive success, then why should an organism stop reproducing? It has five suggested functions, and we'll go through them in some detail. The first is the idea that it is for the safety of the last offspring. It's the mother hypothesis. The second is that the grandmother could help her daughter because she's being released from taking care of her own babies. A third idea is that daughters-in-law are out competing the target female. A fourth is that it's a byproduct of quality control of oocytes. And a fifth idea is that it's the result of self-domestication. So let's step through those. Menopause is rare in mammals and it's derived in humans. Our closest relatives do not have menopause. Chimpanzees, bonobos, and gorillas do not. We'll see some data on that in a moment. There are two cetaceans, two whales, that do have menopause and they have close enduring maternal offspring interactions, the pilot whales and the killer whales. They are rather difficult to study. We're going to now look at four panels, and what I want to stress in these panels is the patterns of survival and reproduction. So the blue is fertility, the red is survivorship, this is chimpanzees, and what you can see is that chimpanzee survival, this is the percentage which uh, are surviving from birth, is dropping. Chimpanzees are starting to reproduce at about 10 to 12 years of age, and they continue to reproduce right through until they're about 50 years old. So they reproduce right up to the end of life. And if we take the chimpanzee reproduction curve and put it over here in black, that's just the same curve brought over here, this is births per female per year, and we plot onto it the reproduction curves for two human hunter-gatherers, the Kung and the Ache, we see that in broad outline they're pretty similar. We start reproducing a little bit later, but we stop reproducing at about the same age, about 45 to 50. However, if when we look at the survival curves, in this case for the Kung and for the Ache, the survival is in red, the reproduction is in blue, what we see is that in both cases, there are several decades of survival after last reproduction. So this is menopause kicking in at the end of reproductive life, but with a couple of decades of life, potential life left after that. This means that if we compare human to chimpanzee patterns, menopause results from an evolved change in survival, not fertility. There are five hypotheses for this, mother, grandmother, reproductive conflict, byproduct, and self-domestication. We'll start with the mother hypothesis. It posits that menopause evolved as part of the terminal reproductive investment of mothers to ensure that children would not be endangered by the increasing risk with age that the mother has of dying while giving birth. In other words, make sure that the mother survives to take care of her last child. It makes some sense, but it's also clear that mothers now survive longer than their parental care would be needed and Theoretical models indicate that the effects of maternal mortality are not large enough to make this a standalone explanation. So it might have an element of truth to it, but it's insufficient. The grandmother hypothesis is that menopause evolved to reduce the increasingly compromised reproduction of grandmothers so that they could gain more fitness by helping their offspring raise their grandchildren. So this is an intergenerational transfer from the old to the young, and that could support selection to extend the post-reproductive period. So the idea here is that survival actually evolved to be longer in order to allow grandparents to take care of grandchildren. Evidence on this is mixed. Sometimes the presence of grandmothers improves the survival of grandchildren. In some societies, it does not. 
The third idea that's out there is the reproductive conflict hypothesis. And this is couched in terms of kin selection. Mothers-in-law are more related to their own offspring, 0.5, than to those of their daughters-in-law, 0.25. Whereas daughters-in-law are unrelated to their mother-in-law's offspring, zero relationship, and are more related to their own, 0.5. So daughters-in-law would be under greater selection to win a conflict over any resource used in reproduction. That could select against re continued reproduction in older women in a small-scale society. The byproduct hypothesis says that menopause didn't evolve itself. It is the byproduct of selection for quality control of oocytes. So if you have high quality control early in life, it's screening out a lot of oocytes and producing high quality offspring. If their fitness outweighs what you might gain from having more offspring late in life, who might be of lower quality because the screen wasn't as good, then menopause could evolve as a byproduct. This effect would be stronger if the aging of the quality control filters means that offspring born later are more likely to be defective. In fact, they are. We know that. The idea here is that menopause occurs when women run out of oocytes, and they run out of oocytes because they're discarding defective ones for quality control. Now, the self-domestication hypothesis has elements of both the grandmother hypothesis and the quality control hypothesis. It posits that post-reproductive life resulted from improvements in survival caused by so social cooperation and the agricultural revolution. So that's when we domesticated ourselves. Once it then existed, so once there was uh, post-reproductive survival, its existence made possible selection then to modify the behavior of those post-reproductive individuals to help grandchildren. If they were around and they could be made useful by changing their behavior a little bit, then and that improved fitness and got more genes into future generations, then that would be operated on. So the idea here is that post-reproductive life came first as a consequence of culture, and then grandparental behavior was selected. So that combines the grandmother hypothesis and the quality control hypothesis. These five hypotheses are not mutually exclusive. So to summarize on menopause, it probably evolved for a combination of reasons that include these. The mother hypothesis, mothers need to survive long enough to care for the last child. The grandmother hypothesis, there comes a point in aging females at which they can get more out of helping their daughters than out of reproducing themselves. The reproductive conflict hypothesis, the daughters-in-law are less closely related to their mother-in-law's offspring than they are to their own and should be more strongly selected to win conflicts over resources. The quality control hypothesis, which is that menopause is a byproduct of quality control for gametes, that, and it occurs when women run out of oocytes. And the self-domestication hypothesis, which is that the first post-reproductive life appeared when cultural evolution improved survival, and then selection shaped grandparental behavior.